The energy transition, biodiversity and mineral mining, what do they have to do with each other? We think we have to make pace with caution, make pace with the energy transition, but with caution and respecting a bottom line, both on human rights and on biodiversity. Are we set for the future? Biodiversity is heavily declining already. It's affected by climate change, but ecosystem services are also crucial in climate mitigation and adaptation strategies. For example, CO2 sinks, microclimate regulation, water retention, and pollination, just to name a few. The scale-up of renewable energy cannot further threaten nature and thereby worsen climate change or the impacts of climate change. A sustainable energy transition is biodiversity proof. A short to-do list is to reduce consumption of energy and energy intensive production, to optimize efficiency, circular design and recycling of raw materials used for the energy transition. And last not least, respect nature in site selection and the management of raw materials and energy projects in general, avoiding in the very first place, avoiding harmful impact. We should address impacts in the full chain the better known ones, for example, at this site in wind parks are including habitat loss and fragmentation and bird bat collisions affecting or potentially affecting populations. But lesser known is that on the other side, there are impacts such as forest destruction, ecosystem and species loss, soil runoff, impacts on water security and availability for the sourcing of raw materials. Zooming in on that picture, what you saw and see is a satellite view of a strip mining site for nickel on Sulawesi. And nickel has a one-on-one -on -one link with the energy transition. Strip mining means that all vegetation is uh, taken off, including the topsoil. And that can also lead not only to deforestation ecosystem destruction, but also to soil runoff that you see are, is affecting the coast, coastal zones. One electric car needs 30 kilograms of nickel. Well, there's 100 millions around, and there's a, a, a steep increase uh, uh, projected also because of policies. So we should be prepared to avoid such environmental impacts. If we look at the top 10 metals for clean energy. Nickel is on the sixth row, and it's needed in almost all the, uh, the, the batteries for almost all types of renewable energy. And on the top line, aluminium, bauxite mining, for example, in Ghana, needed for all of the forums. Copper, for example, from the Philippines needed for all these forums. And if we look at the projections just very shortly now, because please look it up in the report uh, mentioned, uh, World Bank 2020 or KU Leuven in 2021, the projections, lithium going through the roof, but also nickel, a steep increase, 168% of the actual overall global use of the metal in 2020, just for the energy transition. So what worries us is that most mining or a lot of mining is taking place in forests. 44% a few years already, 44% uh, already uh, uh, a few years ago of all operational mines lie in forests. And increasingly we find overlapping claims with protecting often remote areas that risks the following impacts, large scale deforestation and related infrastructure that add to climate risk, effects on water retention, availability and quality, but also offside impacts on coral reefs, agriculture, coastal fisheries, leading to issues of food security. And last not least, coming back to our first picture is species loss and ecosystem disbalance that contribute to biodiversity collapse, worsening climate change and impacts and that can never be the idea. You could say that also for companies that leads to yeah, reputational risks, it leads to uh, uh, potential legal claims and also the non-preparedness for stricter regulation or rules in the, in, the, um, in the commercial world. So that could also mean financial loss for companies. What should be done? Act now to preserve our life support system also in the mineral sector for the energy transition govern the mineral resource base and taking care of the whole value chain from site selection and that means including no-go zones such as nature areas uh, indicated in nickel mining to recycling and using forward-looking performance standards such as the IRMA 
the um, Initiative for Responsible Mining Assurance. Please check them out if you, you haven't done so. Enhance transparency and accountability, involving civil society systematically in due diligence research, but also in the monitoring, and enhance public access to the environmental impact studies to improve compliance and, and make it a useful tool, avoid rubber stamping. And that means, of course, on both sides of the chain, here and there. So we should make pace, yes, but with caution and respect a bottom line, among others, in biodiversity. And this bird that is uh, endemic in Sulawesi will be happy, and so are we. For more information, Mark van der Waal uh, or me, and please use the QR code to go directly to our website. Thank you very much.